Welcome to section 5.1.1. We begin chapter 5 by investigating some other ratios in triangles. We didn't uh, talk about them right off. I mentioned them in the previous units that they would happen. And so they started by giving us a problem like this and asking us if we could find either x or y. And we started thinking through the, the tools that we have. We know the Pythagorean theorem. But to use the Pythagorean theorem, we need at least two sides of a right triangle, and we only have one, so we're not going to be able to find it that way. We thought about our tangent ratio, but to find the tangent, we need to be able to label our sides and find the opposite and the adjacent. Well, we have an opposite and an adjacent, but we don't know either. Now, what I want to show you before we go on any further is, in the tangent ratio, we have the tangent of theta equals the opposite over the adjacent. And what we basically said, and it said that this was the angle, we said that if we're going to be able to solve this, that out of these three pieces of information that we have, the angle and the two sides, we have to know at least two of them. And so we can either know the two sides, or we can know a side and an angle, and we'll be able to figure it out. Usually if we know the two sides, we're trying to find the angle. And so they gave us the same method that they did before. In, so we discovered that basically we, we couldn't do this. We don't have enough information. So we're going to put it off for the moment. Maybe by the end of somewhere in the middle of this lesson, we'll be able to find a way to do that. And so they gave us this kind of a situation and asked us to explore it the way we did in chapter four when we were learning about the tangent ratio. Remember we found that the opposite over the adjacent in slope triangles always gave us the same ratio. So we're going to try to use that whole idea of similar triangles here. Well we know that if this is the same line this is also going to be 60 degrees and before I use similar triangles I have to show that they are uh, show that they're similar. So if this is 60, and this is 90, and this is 60, and this is 90, I know that these are similar by angle, angle similarity. So now I can do some things that we did in the earlier unit. Okay, so let's try to find some of these missing sides that we, we don't have here. Remember, we can do it this way. Uh, I'm going to write it as a ratio of 3 is to 1. So I'm going from here to here as... 6 is to 2. Well, that makes sense since they're, since they're similar because they both equal 3. But let's try to use it to find a side that I don't know. First, let's use the Pythagorean theorem to find one of these missing sides. Okay, so I know 1 squared plus, I'm going to call this y, y squared equals 2 squared. See, 1 plus y squared equals 4. Solve it. y squared equals, let's see, minus 1, minus 1, I get 3. And so I know that y, if I take the square root of both of those, I get y equals the square root of 3. So this side is now going to be known as the square root of 3. That's that side right there. Now, the scale factor on these is 3. So if I multiply 1 times 3, I get 3. 2 times 3, I get 6. So this must be 3 times the square root of 3. Now, now that we've found all the sides, let's look at how some of the ratios compare in these two. Let's take these two ratios. What would the ratio of this side here to that side be? It would be 1 over 2. What would the ratio in the similar triangle be? 3 over 6. Well, 3 over 6 equals 1 half. So we'd like you to see that that ratio for 60 degree holds true. Now, let's label these sides so we can do something with them. For this 60 degree angle, this side would be the adjacent. This side would be the opposite, and this side would be the hypotenuse. So we're going to say, if we were building a chart, if 
we have a ratio of 1 over 2 in a 60 degree for a 60 degree angle and this is the adjacent side and this is the hypotenuse side we're going to say that that's going to hold true. So let's see if we can use that here to find this side. Okay. So we know then that if these are similar triangles, that what we're going to do, we're going to give this ratio, the adjacent over the hypotenuse, we're going to give it a new name and we're going to call it the cosine. And the cosine of the angle will equal the adjacent side over the hypotenuse side. Nothing changes in the way we process this other than we're going to use a different trig ratio. Anyway, in this one we know that x over 7 has to equal 1 over 2. Let's just cross multiply and that'll give us 7 has to equal 2x which means x has to equal 3.5. So I know that this side right here is 3.5. Now, let's look at this ratio. If I do this one, I get the square root of 3 over 2. And on this one, I get 3 times the square root of 3 over 6. Let's see if those are the same. Let's see, this will simplify to one half or the square root of three over two. And so we're going to give this a special name. If I labeled this again, this ratio would be the opposite side over the hypotenuse side. And we're going to give it a special name. We're going to call it the sine of theta. And it's going to be the opposite over the hypotenuse. Let's see if we can use it to find this side. Not, we're not using the sine and cosine in this problem, we're just using similar triangles, but we could use the other. So here we go. We're going to say um, the square root of 3 over 2 needs to equal the value of y um, yes, over 7. Cross multiply, we get 2y equals 7 times the square root of 3. Divide both sides by 2. y is about that number. Let's see what that number is. 7 times the square root of 3 divided by 2 is about 6.06. .06. Now, we've got those numbers. Let's try to use it with those ratios now. Okay, so if I use it with the ratios, I'm going to say in this big triangle here, I'm just going to cut that off for a second. I know the angle. I'm going to label my sides. This is going to be the hypotenuse the opposite, and the adjacent. I can only find one at a time, so I'm going to use the cosine one first because that's what we did before. And we're going to say the cosine of 60 over 1 equals um, x over 7. And then when we do the other one, we're going to say the sine of 60 over 1 will equal the opposite, which is y over 7. Okay, putting this on the calculator, I'm going to check my mode. Good, got degree. And I'm going to say, what is the cosine of 60? It's 0.5. Cross multiply, x equals 3.5. Okay, sine of 60 is 0 0.8660. Take that and multiply it times 7, and I get y equals 6.06. .06. You'll notice those are the same values that we got 6.06 .06 and 3.5 when we were doing it before. On the next video we will cover more of the process so please watch it.